I don't really remember much of 20 level courses. Oh, we just talk about the little parts of it that I can recall. Now, according to the course outline that I have, the first course is CH242. And CH242 is Fundamentals of Thermodynamics. So almost everything that you're going to be doing here is based on thermodynamics. And for thermodynamics, what I'm going to advise you to do is that you see that is a three unit course. So it's very important. You can't just do it any how you like. So the first thing I'm going to advise you to do is that you go back to your under level courses. For those of you that did under level, you go back to your physics one to five. Physics one to five. Go to phase one to five. I'm going to read thermodynamics from there. Now, after you have read thermodynamics for phase one to five, please do not skip any part of it because phase one to five is under level course. So you can't expect to skip some part of under level course that is difficult. Then I expect to do it in a 200 level course. It doesn't make sense at all. And now you are even in 200 level. So it's going to, it should appear easier than it was when you were in 100 level. So try to go back to physics one to five and try to learn everything in thermodynamics in physics one to five. So because everything here is also like that also, the basic concepts, the quantities, you are that quantitative relation of zero to law, first law, second law, and third law. So but physics one to five, the only ones that are in physics one to five are just the zero law is there, the first law is there, the second law is there. There's nothing like third law in phase one to five. They only stopped at second law. So after you have finished reading phase one to five thermodynamics, then you can come back to this. Now the textbook that we used for thermodynamics was, um, I think, um, a letter. I've forgotten the, the name of the original textbook, but um, what happened was that they actually edited the textbook. The textbook was edited. So after the, I don't remember the, the name of the real book, but the name of the book was edited and a letter was added to it. So I know the book as a letter, but I don't know the name of the original book. So if you look for a letter, you should be able to get the textbook. Then there's another textbook that we use. I take Monsoon. I, I don't even recall the, the actual spelling of the name of the textbook. I know it's Monsoon. And all those textbooks are on thermodynamics. So there are books that you can read on thermodynamics and try to read this, all these topics from it. And also, you should also try to solve questions from Sam Fandry. Solve questions from Sam Fandry too. So Sam Fandry also has questions on thermodynamics. Now, this time around, is not um, the time for you to be cramming those questions that are wrong because I've already made a lot of mistakes. So even those parts that they make mistakes, make sure you know the correcting and you know how to do them. Then for CST 264, that's engineering math. Now this engineering math is different from the first semester engineering mathematics, please. They are not the same thing. First semester engineering mathematics is very easy, so that even if you read the day before, you still be able to do very well. But this is different. This you have to start reading it from the beginning of the semester because it is a written course. So you have to write and you have to know what is correct. And for this engine math, I think you can use um, engineering mathematics by HK Das. I think the normal version and the advanced version, both of them are, uh, you should find these topics inside the two of them. Also, you can also read Advanced Engineering Mathematics by HK Das. So that's another book that you can read for your engine math. But please, 
don't think that it is easy. And I think we also read uh, Shum's outline. Shum's outline, we also read Shum's outline of engineering mathematics like that. So those are part of the books that we can also read for this um, engine math. Please do not joke with it. Do not joke with it. You see that you can see that it's also a, a three unit course and it is very important. It's very important and it's, it's not easy. I put it that way, it's not easy. You might think it's easy, but it's not easy like that for semester engineering mathematics. Now this CPE 222 is your SWEP. CPE 222 is SWEP. So according to your department, that's how it's going to be named. So this is because this person is in computer engineering. If the person is in electrical engineering, you see that ELE 222. If the person is in mechanical, you see that ME 222. So this is SWEP, but you do SWEP only after your 200 level. So we don't need to talk about this for now. Now the next one is your practical. Your practical is just the same thing as the first semester practical. Now I don't know what's going to, I don't know what's going to happen during your own time, but what usually happens with the practical is that you have to, um, there, are, there are a lot of drawings that you have to draw. Like all these um, two-stroke engine, four-stroke engine, they will give you um, assignments that you draw those diagrams and submit them. And it's very important for you to uh, make sure you do the drawings. But every other thing is essentially the same thing as what you did in your first semester. So then CVE. Now CVE has become more difficult. You do Hooke's Law. You do stresses and strains and temperature changes. You do torsion. You do stress circle. Stress circle is the more circle. So you do all of these topics. The, the, the difficult part of it is shear force and bending moment, especially when you have to do the graph. That means that you have to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram. That's what they mean by graphical method of structures, the shear force and bending moment diagram. Now for this, you can use... Um, Beer, beer and Justin to read it. I think you can also use Ibella and you can also use this textbook, Barry J. There's another textbook that is Barry J. So you can also use it to read um, your CV. Please, it's very important that you understand all these stuff. And for the shear force and bending moment diagrams, there are some like eight, like there are some shortcuts that is going to make it very easy for you to even draw the diagram without even calculating on the beam because that's what we are asked during the exam and since it is professor Dima that is taking you guys i i believe that the man the man is someone that likes for someone to work he doesn't like giving somebody simple question that you just look at it and just say the answer that's that's just professor Dima. he likes giving someone a question that you work before you get the answer so he's probably going to ask you a lot of questions on bending moment diagram shear force and bending moment diagram is going to ask you a lot of questions on them. He even prefer people to do his course as written. So unless, I, 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 there is reason for me to believe that he might even change it to written. But I don't think he can change it. I don't think so. So it should still be a CBT course. And you are supposed to know how to draw shear force and bending moment diagram, how to use the more circle, the interpretation of everything in the more circle, you are supposed to know them. So you can read all those textbooks for um, the topics that are inside this course. And you can see it's also a three unit course. So it's something that if you do very well, you should still be able to pass it. Now for ELE, ELE is basically almost, is almost the same as four semesters ELE, but there is a little difference in the sense that here, I think they are talking about generators. You see alternators, transformers, equivalent circuits. So for this one, you have to attend all your classes. ELE is always like that. Make sure you attend all your classes and make sure you listen very well in HOD's class because HOD is the one that usually sets most of the questions that you see in ELE. So anything he teaches you, make sure you write down his notes and make sure you know everything that he takes. Then you can also use this textbook, um, Teraja. That's what we used for ELE 202, we use Teraja to read it that time. So you can still read it with Teraja, then make sure you have notes and read your notes very well. You know that ELE, their department, they don't like giving people time. They don't like giving people time. CV will give you time and they will give you questions that you will work. ELE will give you questions that you will suffer, but they will not give you enough time. 
So just read that for yearly. I think you should be good. And also um HOD's notes. Then for yearly 276, it's still the same thing as almost the same thing as first semester. Read everything that you are given in class. And during our time, um uh, okay, just read everything you are given in class. And any questions that the man gives you in class, please do not joke with them. Any questions that the man just come to class and give you questions, make sure you know those questions very well because they are likely going to come out in your exam. Genesis 2 and 2, Introduction to Social Sciences and Civic Education. I think there should be a um, spender for this particular course. There should be spender for it. And that's what they usually set every year from that spender. And that's all. You don't need to disturb yourself on this. Now for ME, ME is more difficult than first semester ME. It's first semester ME that you just be drawing. <laughs> but this time around, you see what they wrote here? They wrote something here. They said what? Blueprint reading and what? Development. This development is the difficult part of it. You know, first semester, you'll be given the diagram and you have to reproduce that diagram, right? Now for second semester, you do something like that, but you still do more especially the aspect of development. Development means you'll be given your question in statement form. You're not the one that will interpret it and draw the diagram on your own, not that you already be given the diagram. So there will still be parts where you have been given the diagram and you're asked to reproduce the diagram. And there will be parts where you have to do what you have to develop. That means that you have to interpret the question and draw the diagram from what you are given. And there are even some part of development that you'll be given to like a diagram, but what you are expected to do is going to be more than that diagram. That's why they call it development. So they just give you like a basic rule of how the um, shape is going to be changing. Then you have to draw the full um, view of the shape. So please be careful. And you still have to do asymmetric projection. Asymmetric projection is very easy. It's very easy, but it's difficult if you don't, if you are not familiar with it. So 200, um, second semester courses are a little bit more difficult than first semester courses. Now for ME272, I we, what actually happened during our own time was that, one sets questions for us from a particular website. I think it was India Biz or something like that. I can't recall the name of the website. And the questions look nothing like what is inside the course. So most of us didn't do well in the test because of that. Or in the exam, because people were able to like find out where the exam came from, where the test questions came from. So they went and downloaded all of the questions and uh, memorized them for the exam. That was actually what happened. So people did well for the uh, exam. So... I don't know what will happen this time around, but whatever materials the man gives you, make sure you read the materials very well. Then if you still have those past questions also, or you can go to that website. I think it's India Biz or something. So you should go there and try to like study all the questions that are there. So I think that should be all for all the um, 200 level second semester courses. I don't think there's any other course that you are doing that have not talked about.